everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Dining on a Dime. I am your host, Lucas Peterson. We are standing on Southwest 8th Street, heading to a place called El Mago de las Fritas. And a Cubana Frita is a traditional Cuban sandwich that dates back to the beginning part of the 20th century in Cuba. The best way to describe it would be sort of like a Cuban hamburger. El Mago de las Fritas, which means the magician of the fritas, was started by a man named Ortelio Cardenas in the 1980s. He is recently taken somewhat ill, and so unfortunately he will not be able to speak with us today, but we will be able to speak with his daughter. So I'm really excited to try these Cubana Fritas. I'm really excited to get a taste of what a real traditional Cuban hamburger tastes like. Let's go. Hi, Danielle. Hello. I'm Lucas. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, I'm hey, Lucas. George Orr. Hi, George. Nice to meet you guys. George, I understand that you've been coming here for a long time. Since 1984, since I graduated high school. So I keep coming back and later on I invited my parents to come and my friends and it's been like a tradition forever. And now my daughters. It's always been consistent and excellent. Always fresh. It's like a family restaurant. Everybody knows everyone. It's my first thing. Did you grow up in Miami? Yep. I'm a native. My parents are from Cuba, I was born here. Okay. So out of me and my sisters, I was the only one born here. What is it about Miami in particular? Like why didn't Orlando become the center of the Cuban population in, in Florida? Well, I know from my parents' perspective, they just knew it because they would come on vacation here. Okay. Go to Miami Beach and see the sights and go back. So when the revolution began, they began they to move here and live here. This is what they knew. Okay. Danielle, do you like the food here? <laughs> When I first came here, all I ate were rice and beans here on Wednesdays because they used to have a special sign. Nice. And my dad would get bored of it. He'd be like, Danielle, when are you going to eat something new? I was like, croquetas. So that's all I <laughs> ate, croquetas and rice and beans. And then my dad was like, you got to try a frita. And I tried it. I was like, it's actually really good. So next thing you know, after a while, my dad was like, you got to try this mango piste. It's good. I was like, OK. I tried it. It's good, too. It's really good. So it sounds like everything you've had here is pretty good. Juicy. And, and did you did you learn a lesson that when your dad says you should try this thing and you're kind of like, I don't want to try it, but then you try to it. So did you learn a lesson that you should trust your father? Yes. <laughs> That's important. Nice it's to meet very you. nice to meet you. You're the daughter of Ortelio. Yes. Is I that am. correct? Yes, Ortelio. You said it very well. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a difficult one. <laughs> he is the original Mago de las Fritas, right? Yes, he is. So mm -hmm. he's the magician. He's the magician. Why did he open this restaurant in the 1980s? My father was never in the restaurant business, was never a cook. They didn't even know how to cook at home. And my uncle reached out to him, offered him, you know, why don't you learn? I think you'll be a good businessman. Eventually you'll become a good cook. And my father learned and liked it and worked with him for a couple of years. And then he came and opened him. And my mother would cook, my mother would take orders, and my father would do more of the griddle stuff, more of the fritas, the pan de tec. And a few months later, they hire a you know, waitress. And little by little, they started, you know, growing and growing. And it is what it is today. It's a small family business. Yeah. So there's a lot of places that make frita cubanas, but a lot of people say this is the best in the whole city. What do you do that makes it really good? We make it ourselves, mm -hmm. my father and I. We're the only ones making the recipe. We make it fresh when we order it. Fresh meat, yeah. the potatoes are fresh, the bread is fresh, made for us daily. On top of that, it's made with a lot of love mm -hmm. and caring. We're always on top of things and making sure things are done right. Present to you the Cubana Frita. Just gonna dig in here and have a bite. You guys, I love the Cubana Frita. This is on the list of favorite sandwiches of all time. You've got 
the nice spiced meat of the patty. The smushed flap on that flat top griddle. Got that beautiful runny fried egg. And then the shoestring potato is so nice because it adds a crunch. Certainly if you like the spiced meat chorizo pork, you would really love the cubana frita. This is great. Now we have a creation of Mago de las Fritas. They've experimented with different sandwiches and they came up with something which is going to be a frita that incorporates a medianoche sandwich. So a medianoche sandwich is another Cuban sandwich that has ham and pulled pork. We haven't really done traditional Cuban sandwiches while we've been in Miami. We've been trying to get a real representation of all kinds of different cuisines. So it's sort of nice we can get this mashup of the frita and the medianoche. So here you've got a bunch of different things going on. You've got that traditional frita patty, but then you've also got this pork infusion. It just adds another nice dimension, adds that salty nitrite. You can taste the bread is a little bit sweeter. The difference is subtle, but it just gives a nice complement to what's going on within the sandwich, which is extremely salty. We'll take a little platito break. The platito is just a shake. And this is the mame sapote. I think this is really good. To me, it sort of tastes like dulce de leche. It has a natural creaminess and carameliness. Last but not least, pan con steak. This is just going to be a steak sandwich. It's got that heavily spiced flavor. Not quite as strong as the chorizo, but still a lot of garlic and onion. Really salty, hearty meat. That steak is pounded so thin, it really just kind of melts when you take a bite into it. It's a great sandwich. I don't know if I would take this over the frita. Maybe if I came here every day, maybe one day a week, I would get the Paco de Steak. To recap, we're here at Mago de las Fritas, which has been around since 1984, for more than 30 years. Portelio, the owner, the Mago, the magician, has really developed a relationship with clientele, with the neighborhood, and it's not something that you see as often in restaurants that are purely profit driven. When you've got these old school places, mom and pop family places, that really do care about the community, really do develop relationships with people, and so the love of a restaurant, the love of a dish, is actually handed down from generation to generation, and we saw that tonight. It's a special familial environment. That's not something you can fake, and that's not something you can manufacture. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from El Mago de las Fritas in Miami, Florida. If you'd like to watch more, please click here. We're gonna have to take a Yo. picture. Yeah, take a picture with the crew then. Just take a little photo. Say, Paco Piste. Paco Piste! Are we in it? <laughs>